Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to do an unboxing of the base game of High Frontier for All, the uh, very, very detailed, very, very scientific space exploration game by Phil Eklund. Uh, you may remember uh, we did an unboxing of the High Frontier 3 uh, Kickstarter a few, years, a few years back, and so this is the uh, newly updated, streamlined, um, modularized uh, High Frontier in its fourth iteration. So let's crack it open, take a look at what's inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. Okay, wow. The big box of stuff. Can you get on the screen? Not without difficulty. Anyway, first thing we see is bags. Lots of loose bags. Just bags and bags and bags. No neat rubber band, no bags in a bag. Just a bunch of bags. Like, hey, let's load this one up. Throw some bags in there. So we get some loose bags. We have a single die in a bag with a red single pip and the rest are all silver. So we also have, as in the other, we have cards. We'll get to those in a minute. We have counters. We have some wooden counters. They're kind of like half, uh, half Skittles. Like if you cut a Skittle in half, right? So they're there in the uh, in four colors. I'm counting right. One, two, three, four, four colors. Then we got some clear beads. They just seem to be flat on one side. And these are probably for water or some sort of marker. We have cubes also in the different colors and a star, a gold star. I'm gonna get all those out because it was falling. And we have plastic rocket ships. These will get out because it's got to play with toys, don't we? And I'm not gonna make a pew pew sound except to say I'm not gonna make a pew pew sound, but I got to say a pew pew sound without saying a pew pew sound. So, anyway, there they are. Got the boosters, got the center rocket. Very cool looking. Nicely molded plastic. So those will move around on the board. So keep those in there. Looks like you get two per player color. And there are five colors. So it's good to know. And then we get some, we get to play tiddlywinks. We've got opaque ones in the player colors. And we got some clear ones in red. And some opaque ones in red. That's player color. Kind of purple. So there we go. Lots of those. You can play tiddlywinks with them, or you can use them as you're supposed to. So we'll look at the cards in a minute. Let's get to the books first. We'll take these down here. And the first book up is Core Rules. And this is pretty thick feeling so far. Just picking it up. And it is going to be 54 pages. Glossy kind of magazine stock. There's the Core Rules, full color. Uh, looks like the text, the, it's got footnotes. There are footnotes in the rule book. That's always a good sign. So study for class. It tells you what your play mats will do. Silver system charts. Lots of, lots of pictures taking up space. And again, there's footnotes to fully explain rules. So that's, it's probably helpful. So you don't have to reference things. You can look down below and see them. So Hopefully it's a tutorial, but we'll see. All right, so here's a scenario, Race for Glory and Race for Mars. These were designed by Alcan and Simon Ng. I'm probably saying that wrong, please forgive me. Uh, Race for Glory, the essential high frontier. So this is obviously scenarios that you can play, it tells you what, what components to use and where you're trying to get to. Uh, it looks like the maybe a tutorial mission. Let's see. Uh, it leaves out some of the core rules. Gives you differences from the core rules. Race for Glory scenario. Okay, Race for uh, Race for Glory is a uh, scenario. It says an essentials only version of High Frontier. So it does differ from the rules. So it's got its own rules, own scenario rules, but also. Um, uses most of them, so. 
Interesting numbering strategy. They've got the lowercase t, t section g, t f5. All right, then we've got an appendix, which is, so the Race for Glory rules is, uh, or section is 28 pages. The appendix is going to be 40 pages. And the appendix serves to be a, and I guess it's variants and scenarios. So it's got the very, the varied variants right here. First listing them out. Lots of variants. Strategy guides, card references. So on and so forth. So good reference book. Now we've got these space diamonds. This is okay, here we go. Now we've got an introductory game. So it's like some old role-playing games where you got the game system and then you got the you, you go out and buy the little uh, scenario mission or whatever, but this comes with it. So introductory game by John Manker. And this is a much smaller book, which is helpful. It's eight pages. Space to Diamonds is designed to be your first game of High Frontier, introducing you to how sails and rockets move and getting you comfortable with the game's subway map representation of our subway, of our solar system. The Space Diamonds rules are formatted in the same way as the other rules. You will play using only a portion of the core box components, and it tells you which components you're going to need, anomalies from the rules, so on and so forth. So this is definitely where you're going to want to start before you go into advanced calculus, physics, and astronomy. And, wisely put under the stack of all the other books, is the Read Me First book, which probably should have gone on top. So if people open a box, they read first, they read me first. But anyway, this feels like an eight-page uh, document. It is uh, apparently heavy cardboard. The YouTube channel did a playthrough of High Frontier 4, and if you click this uh, QR code, it'll take you to that video, or you can just search YouTube for it, I'm sure. Um, First thing up in big friendly letters, don't panic. It'll teach you how to play the game. So um, I, that's what I basically have done with High Frontier in the past is I panicked. I looked at it and said, wow, gee, you know, I'm not going to be able to play this. Changes from High Frontier 3. Don't have to worry about that. I never played High Frontier 3. I owned it and then it's never played it. So uh, and there's some references to sites. Excellent. So then we got player aid cards. There are two sets, uh, yeah, two sets, and they are, it appears to be a trifold glossy magazine stock instead of card stock. So the trifold's kind of weird. Um, I mean, I guess it works. Might have been better to add more content to it, made it a booklet, you know, so it opened normally. So you don't have to reverse fold, but anyway. That's how they chose to design it. That's what you're going to get. I'm just reporting the facts. Just the facts, man. So you get two of those. Now you get your player mats. And a... They look like they're single-sided. Plastic bag here. So let's look at those. We've got a Race for Glory Sunspot Cycle chart. A sunspot cycle chart for the core game. You got a player aid for race for glory game, and you've got Saul political assembly. And then you got the player mats, which they're flimsy, they're small, but they're going to sit on your table, so you're not going to be moving them around a lot. So I guess it's okay. They're not, you know, they're just that thin cardstock stuff. So anyway, they look to be 100% identical. They're not variable. So it's so what you do that makes your corporation or your exploration group different. It's all about you. Okay, so then we got card. Okay, some of that cardboard's gonna be the board. So let's start with the punch board stuff here. Got some very tiny wet dry markers here, obviously with the different player colors. And then uh, looks like a colony and a satellite in the player colors. And then we've got, I guess, different resources you can find, maybe. These are all S. This row here is all S, and they're different minerals, so on and so forth. Here's some more S's. So we got S's, C's, M's, V's. That will all make me have some meaning once I get through, and don't panic, and get through the rules. You got a sheet of punch board. And then we've got the game map. 
What comes out kind of dusty. So we're going to take a look at it. It is a huge, huge map. They were not kidding about the subway map design of this thing with these lines connecting different locations. Getting really intense out here toward Jupiter and even more as you go out to Neptune, so on and so forth. So uh, it's big, it's, it, it's really not that big. I guess it's 12 by 12 box maybe. So the map itself, let's take a measure here, just under 36 inches. So the, each, each section is less than 12 by 12, about 11 and a half, 11, 7, 5, something like that. So the map ends up being just slightly under three feet by two feet. So poster size. So that's not really too big on the table. It seems like it's going to be big. If they'd gone to two more panels, it would have been a nightmare. But it's very bright, very colorful. Um, probably easy to find things when you need to, but there are so many things on here. Hopefully there's a legend somewhere uh, or a key that tells you, oh, this, by the way, is here, but I don't see any guides that say, hey, you're, you know, this is a, there's no sector K-12 that you can go to and find things. So anyway, okay, let's take a look inside the card decks real quick. Um, they do have the uh, peel wrapper, which is nice. That's chewing gum. So without knowing context, so these are relatively thin. Um, so this is a refinery. And it's double-sided, also a refinery. So obviously there's an upgrade setup probably going on. The reactor's double-sided. So you get a lot of these uh, uh, infrastructure, I guess, cards. And then we've got spacecraft cards. And then these are mission cards. Be the first to Jupiter's slide by bonus and claim a chit in the same turn. Several mission cards. So these are things you're going to build. I guess you're going to add a refinery, and this is the, this is the type of refinery you're going to add a reactor, so on and so forth. And then we've got this other stack of cards here. Looks to be more of the same. So we've got more of the uh, infrastructure guards, refineries, robonauts, thrusters. Also, again, double-sided, upgradable or downgradable, I guess, depending on which side's which. Uh, crew. You can improve your crew, build your crew. Um, then we've got a, it's like an overlay to go on the map around Venus and on Earth. I'm sure they'll explain that. Got the refineries, Robonauts. Oh, and these are tagged, these particular ones are tagged Race for Glory at the top. So it would be used only in that scenario. So that helps you. All right. So those are just a quick look at the two decks of cards that you're gonna get in High Frontier for All. Anyway, if you're boldly gonna go and get High Frontier for All, you're gonna get the big map board. You're gonna get one sheet of tokens, which is nice. You're gonna get five of the player mats. You're gonna get two uh, tracking cards. You're gonna get two trifold player aids. You're gonna get a read me first, which we'll put on the bottom. You're gonna get space diamonds. You're gonna get the, which is an introductory game. You're gonna get the appendix reference book. You're gonna get the race for glory, race for Mars scenarios. You're gonna get the core rules. And tiddlywinks, cool rocket miniatures, uh, wooden tokens for the players, blue marker beads, Probably water, uh, other marker beads for each player faction, a bunch of bags. And here's my recreation of the uh, packaging of this product. Give them some bags. There we go. And as I said, the two decks of cards. So that is what you're going to get inside of High Frontier for all. And one six sided die. From Ion Games, or Ion Game Designs, your Madre Games, and designer Phil Eklund. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye.
Oh, 